Hi YouTube, um, I've got another watercolour painting for you um, and I'll show you how to do it step by step. This is a little house on a bridge uh, somewhere in France. Okay, this is step one just to draw your main outlines in. Uh, you can see I did a bit of uh, stonework on the bridge uh, and the wall um, but I haven't done too much detail to the house yet. Okay, the second stage of the drawing, um, I added the boats in and the um, background horizon line. Uh, I did the bush in the foreground uh, and I added some of the beams and a bit more detail to the house. Okay, the next stage of the drawing, um, I've darkened a lot of the stonework on the bridge, um, added even more beams and things to the house, tiles on the roof of the house, um, done a bit more detail to the bushes uh, on top of the bridge and uh, also there's a few more plants like underneath the arch of the bridge. Okay for the first pencil shading stages uh, I did uh, the bridge concentrated on the bridge the wall and underneath the house and then for the second part of the uh, pencil blending stages I did the house itself uh, and also any sort of reflections in the water. Um, you don't have to do any pencil shading stages if you don't want. You can just do the outline in pencil and then go straight in with paint. But I think this pencil shading stage adds um, a certain amount of realism to the finished picture. So I tend to do this with quite a lot of my watercolours. Okay, for the first paint stage I used raw sienna. Um, fairly watery because you, you want the house to be a sort of a creamy colour. Um, so you can see what I've blocked in here like all of the house, all of the bridge and the wall and also the reflections um, just leaving gaps really for the sky, the boats and the water uh, and some of the foliage. Okay for the um, the first blue kind of colour um, what I did was obviously the water first so if you start with just plain water and just wet the everywhere the blue is going to go just wet it first just with plain water uh, and then add the blue into it um, so you're putting it in wet in wet then you can kind of pull the blue around and play with it as much as you want while it's wet you can dab bits out with a bit of kitchen paper if you need to uh, you can make it as soft as you want and you can see i did a few sort of ripply uh, almost kind of zigzag effects in the front okay the sky i did in exactly the same way i actually turned the picture around and I wet the whole sky area first, again just with plain water uh, and then I took my blue which is azure blue, the same blue that I use for the water um, and again I just put the um, blue into the the water so you're getting a wet and wet effect um, and this just makes the sky a bit smoother and then I basically I put the blue in the whole sky uh, apart from I just left a light bit where it meets the horizon just blended that down um, and then any clouds and things while it's all still wet you can just dab out using a bit of kitchen paper uh, and I just did a few sweeping clouds okay then I mixed a really yellowy green so I just used um, sap green mixed with um, some cadmium yellow uh, and then I literally just blocked in everywhere where I want green plants to be these will be darkened up in quite a lot of areas later. The two trees above the bridge that I've left white are going to end up being yellow, so I haven't put anything onto those yet. Okay, I did a mix of English red with a tiny bit of violet, not much violet, just a bit, just to neutralise the English red a little bit. And then this goes on the roof, um, into the shadow area under the bridge. Uh, Payne's grey will be added to that later as well, but just um, stick with this mix for now then I painted the um, bush above the bridge yellow uh, this that's just cadmium yellow and the same with the tree above the bridge and then I just used some English red um, fairly neat uh, on the tree as well just to give a bit of texture you can also see little hints of like English red sort of colour throughout the whole picture. So like in the little roofs in the background on the horizon line um, and then throughout the sort of stonework in some of like the gaps and things in between the stones. So you can add it in those areas as well and in the stones in the foreground and also the big reflection down into the water. Okay, next I switched to a small brush 
Um, I was using a number six brush. I switched to a number three with a good point on it. Uh, and I just used sepia, quite a strong mix of sepia, to do all the beams on the house uh, and all the branches. These are just the thickest branches. You can go in later and add a lot thinner ones with an even smaller brush. Uh, but this is all the main ones. Okay, next I added a lot of dark green into all of the um, bushes and ivy on the bridge and that kind of thing. So in my set there's a dark green which is just called green. Um, but you could mix like a sort of standard grass looking green with a bit of black. Um, and that would do the same kind of thing. Um, so yeah, in all the dark shadowy areas in each kind of tree and bush and things. Um, and you can see I've also painted the railing on the bridge. Um, that is just done with some raw sienna. Okay, then I used a Payne's Grey mix, uh, fairly dark this one, it's quite a lot of pigment. This is just to do um, inside the main kind of window panes. Um, so it needs to be darker than whatever sepia colour you use for the beams, otherwise uh, the beams won't show up. Okay, from here on in it's all about adding contrast really to the whole picture. Um, so on this stage I used mainly sepia, this is to go into all of the corners, so your sepia can be a much stronger, thicker mix with lots more pigment now. You go into the um, corners and edges and blend away from them, so like underneath the house, um, the corners where, uh, on the bridge where the light's hitting it coming in from the left hand side and then you want the shadow to be on the other side of the wall and the other side of the bridge so you can yeah just work into your corners and then blend away from them that starts to give the contrast you can also do shadows under the ivy on the bridge um, some can be done with Payne's grey some can be done with sepia okay I did more Payne's grey into the windows and the doorway in the um, on the actual house uh, and then I've added darker Payne's grey washes uh, you can see as the big shadows are on the bridge and on the wall uh, and gone even darker underneath the house. Um, and then I thought I needed darker um, blue in the water. So I just re-wet the areas that I wet before and just went in with some much stronger azure blue. Uh, and you could keep doing this multiple times if you want to, just build it up gradually. Um, but you can see the extra strong blue really starts to give it a kick. Okay, this is further strengthening and also adding extra details. So I did um, finer branches on the trees uh, and added a little bit more foliage at the kind of uh, outer edges of the trees above the bridge. Um, I've added thin fence posts to the um, railing on the bridge. Um, a little bit of extra kind of texture and things on the ivy uh, on the growing on the bridge and also the stonework on the bridge and then the darkest spaces uh, of the reflection under the bridge and also the um, the sort of effect of rocks underneath the water uh, under the bridge that's all done with sepia okay a little bit more strengthening here Mainly the um, shadows on the roof, a bit more Payne's Grey added to those just to up the contrast a little bit more. Okay, I almost left it as the previous stage. I thought it was looking pretty finished, but um, I decided just to go for it just that little bit more. So I've gone in and really just strengthened a lot of the colours. So um, if you basically just go back to the previous image and just compare it with this one, just look backwards and forwards and you'll see that really all I've done is just strengthen a lot of the colour. So it's just probably just using the same colours that you've used already, uh, but just working back into a lot of corners and edges uh, and just strengthening them up. So like underneath the bridge, I've gone a lot darker uh, in the reflection and that helps. Um, and I've strengthened the reflection of the wall on the other side. And just quite a lot of the just general colours I've just um, gone in and just made the pigment a bit stronger and it's made quite a huge difference actually so um, it's worth thinking about that if ever you're doing a painting do I need to just do just that little bit more at the end and quite often just spending another sort of 10-15 minutes on a painting can uh, change it completely and make it look a lot better 
Okay, I'll leave you with this little satisfying run through of all the stages again, uh, but obviously a lot quicker. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you give it a go. Um, it's a nice image, it's got quite a lot of good elements in it. It's nice doing a, a little house, um, but it's nice also having the reflection and the bridge and all the different textures. Um, I really enjoyed this particular one and I hope you do too. Um, and if you want to see more step-by-step -step painting videos, um, check out the other ones that I've put on already. Um, and hit subscribe to see any new ones that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.